Greetings and salutations, dear viewers. Get ready for some fantastic content. Hello, fellow enthusiasts. Today, we're diving deep into the fascinating world of Fred Clark Educationist. Sir Frederick Clark to August 1886, January 1952 was an English educationist who was director of the Institute of Education in the University of London between 1936 and 1945. During the ERS and ERS, he was also a strong advocate for educational reform in England and Wales. Clark was fully involved in the public educational debate at the time and a member of a private group of leading educational thinkers known as the Moot. He is known particularly for his book Education and Social Change, an English interpretation from 1940. Other books include the collection of essays, Essays in the Politics of Education 1923 and Freedom in the Educated Society 1948. In this section, we'll be exploring early life. Sir Fred Clark was born on 2nd August 1880 at Highcoggies, Whitney, Oxfordshire. His parents were Mr. and Mrs. William Clark. He moved with his family to Oxford where he attended Street Ebbs Anglican Boys School which was a monitorial school and where he was selected to be one of the pupil teachers 1894-1899. Sir Fred Clark obtained a first class in the Queen's Scholarship which entitled him to subsidised attendance at the Oxford University Day Training Teaching College at Street Catherine's Society for Poor Scholars who provisioned their own lodgings. In order to obtain a degree he also studied history in addition to his studies for a teaching certificate and hence graduated with the Bachelor of Arts with first class honours for his four-year degree course 1899-1903. Turning our focus to personal life, let's explore its key elements. Sir Fred Clark married Edith Annie Gilliams in 1907. He had two daughters, Anna Clark and Claudia Clark. In the next segment, we'll be exploring career and its implications for our subject matter. The major highlights of Fred Clark's career as an educationist were Senior Master of Method at York Diocesan Training College, 1903-1906 Professor of Education at Hartley University College, Southampton, 1906-1911 Professor of Education at the University of Cape Town, South Africa, from 1911 to 1918 Dean of Faculty of Education at the University of Cape Town, South Africa, 1918-1929 Professor of Education at McGill University, Montreal in Canada from 1929 to 1934 World Tour of Western Canada, Australia and New Zealand sponsored by the Carnegie Corporation 1935 Advisor to Overseas Students at the Institute of Education in the University of London 1935 Third Director of the Institute of Education in the University of London between 1936 and 1945 when retired in retirement, reverted to being advisor to overseas students at the Institute of Education in the University of London. Let's now venture into the realm of committee evidence and explore the fascinating intricacies it holds. Clark contributed to the Spence Report 1938 with a memorandum on influences affecting secondary curricula in the Dominions where he expounded his understanding based both on his time as Professor of Education in both Canada and South Africa, his world tour of 1935 and time advising overseas students. Clark also gave evidence to the Norwood Committee. Let's now zoom in on McNair Committee and uncover the hidden gems that lie within. Prior to the Education Act of 1944 known as the Butler Act, when the Board of Education was still in operation, Clark served on the McNair Committee under the chairmanship of Sir Arnold McNair to consider the supply, recruitment and training of teachers and youth leaders. Controversially, the committee split on the key recommendations regarding the ideal organisation for training teachers whereby Clark and half the committee supported universities providing teacher training whereas the chair and the other half of the committee supported a continued role for teacher training colleges. Clark's argument for universities hinged on the synergy between university research into pedagogy and the training of teachers so research was improved and teacher training was always abreast of the latest ideas. 
The counter-argument for training colleges, especially those attached to schools, was that training was more practical and hands-on. Now, let's delve into the intricacies of Central Advisory Council for Education, England, and explore its various aspects. Central Advisory Council for Education, England After the Education Act of 1944 brought the Ministry of Education into force, Fred Clark was appointed as the first chairman of the Central Advisory Council for Education, England, where he played a role guiding post-war education policy for the new ministry. During his tenure, two inquiries were carried out and with the resulting reports known as the Clark Reports. 1. School and Life 1947-2 Out of School 1948 The Clark Report 1948 Out of School recommended an expansion of municipal facilities for children which most people today have enjoyed during their childhood, including libraries encouraging children by stocking children's books and later innovations like reading corners, playgrounds with equipment such as slides, swings and roundabouts, public swimming pools and sports playing fields. With the groundwork laid, let's now examine other public service roles and its connections to our previous discussions. Clark also undertook numerous advisory and committee roles with, for example, the National Union of Teachers, the British Council and the establishment of the National Foundation for Educational Research. In this chapter, we'll be shedding light on books and its role in shaping our understanding. 1909 School History at Hampshire 1923 Essays in the Politics of Education 1929 The Foundations of History Teaching a Critique for Teachers 1940 Education and Social Change An English Interpretation 1948 Freedom in the Educated Society In the following section, we'll be immersing ourselves in the captivating world of journals. Sir Fred Clark was a prolific writer of articles in educational journals, mainly aimed at professional readers on topics such as the training of teachers, the history of education, critiques of educational theories, and opinions on government policies towards education. In the upcoming portion, we'll be dissecting the educational news, Cape Town, South Africa to gain a comprehensive understanding of its implications. A word on training 1911 school and training college 1912 the evolution of educational theory 1912 and posset preceptor salvus s. 1912 the history of education Kubono. 1912 Montessori and 1913 the Russell. Memorandum 1914 from Locke to Montessori 1914 The Syndicalist in Education in two parts 1915 The History Question 1915 The Score of Shakespeare's Day 1915 Educational Outlook 1916 Letter What is a Teacher? 1916 Letter Matriculation under the new university scheme 1916 Education and Labour in two parts 1919 Presidential Address South African Teachers Association 1919 Training of Teachers Departments Proposals in two parts 1920 The Salaries Commission 1920 Professional Status of the Teacher 1920 Presidential Address South African Teachers Association 1921 Letter Greetings and Prophecies 19 1923 Education and Society 1923 Letter, Reply to Mr. Earl of Rhodes University, Re. Teachers Hired Diploma of the University of South Africa 1925 The Imperial Mind Book Review 1925 An Introduction to Psychology Book Review 1926 Secondary School Courses 1926 History in the Primary School 6 Articles 1927 Impressions of the Imperial Education Conference in London 1928 The Question of Medium Plus A Subsequent Reply to Criticism to this Article 1928 Letter Conference and the Training of Teachers 1928 The Philosophical Basis of Education Book Review 1928 Educational Psychology Book Review 1928 Seen from the Threshold 1929 Valedictory Letter to Conference South African Teachers Association Now let's redirect our focus towards the Hibbert Journal a quarterly review of religion, theology and philosophy and discover its significance in our narrative the Hibbert Journal, a quarterly review of religion, 
Theology and Philosophy in Elementary Secondary School 1928 English Mind and Dominion Mind 1929 Education and the New English 1930 Community An Estimate of the Vital Principle of English Education 1930 to the Mature Significance of New Countries Welcome to the next segment where we explore the Teachers Magazine, Quebec, Montreal, PQ and its significance in our journey. 1930 Some First Impressions Vol. XIII 1930 Notes on Education in the Province of Quebec Vol. XIII 1930 Training the High School Teacher, Developments and Possibilities in Quebec Vol. XIII 1930 To a Graduate Year of Training for High School Teachers Vol. XIV 1933 Saving Democracy Vol. XV 1935 Retrospect Vol. XBII 1936 The State Master or Servant Vol. XBIII. In the upcoming portion, we'll be dissecting the new era to gain a comprehensive understanding of its implications. 1927 New Education in Africa 1931 British Commonwealth Disintegration or Mutual Understanding 1932 The Key to Tomorrow I. The Reconstruction of Discipline 1934 The New Countries in Education 1936 The State, Master or Servant 1940 Now and Tomorrow, Plan Freedom 1941 A Note on the Exploratory Years 1942 Cultural Aspects of Vocational Education Stay connected and join our community by subscribing and following me on other platforms.